Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, we're going to be using stencils and acrylic paint to make an art journal page. I love this Nicole Wright Design stencil. It's part of her Get Toasted stencil collection. And I love the mountain imagery, which will be the focal point for our art journaling page today. So let's get started. To start with, I'm actually taking out a page from my art journal. You could definitely do this in an art journal and I've done that before, but because I have these removable pages, I'm just pulling it out. So a nice flat surface to work on. So to start this design, I'm going to start by just putting down some paint with a brayer. I'm using a combination of some of the paints I have on hand. I have this Paper Artsy Calypso paint that I will be using. I'm just putting a little bit down we don't need very much when you're working with a brayer. I'm using a Dina Wakely acrylic ocean paint. I'm also going to use a little bit of this manganese blue hue by Golden. As you can see, I don't stick to just one brand of paint when I'm when I'm using paint in my projects. And so I'm also going to use a little bit. I think this is an aquamarine color. I have so much paint on there, I actually can't read the label anymore. And some cerulean blue. And it's probably actually more paint than I need, being that we're working on a fairly small surface. And of course, I'm going to actually use a little bit of this Liquitex Gesso. I mostly use white paint, but in this case, I'm just using Gesso because it's on hand and I have lots of it. And so what we're going to start doing is using our brayer, we're going to pick up a little bit of the paint. And you just want to pull it across your brayer like so. And then add a little bit onto your surface. And I'm starting at the bottom so that I can keep the bottom dark and the top light. And you don't necessarily have to go in any particular direction. The idea is just to add texture and layers of color. And I actually put my paint down on my palette a little close together so they're mixing a bit more, but I don't mind that. It's going to give me a different effect. And what I love about the brayer is you end up getting this really fun textured and extremely random look to your page. And I come in with this darker blue as well. I actually mix it with a little bit of this other blue so it's not just all one solid color. probably noticed that I have used Pabillos a lot in my jelly printing and other art mediums. It's definitely one of my go-to paints. I do like that manganese blue hue. It ends up adding a little bit of brightness to this page. And it gone a little bit darker than I actually originally planned on, so we're going to come in with some white. And lighten that up a little bit. And I'm actually going to mix some of the white with some of the blue. And I'm putting that down as well. It's a little bit easier to get a little bit more variation when you're using a little less paint and you're also working on a slightly larger surface. In this case, because I am working on a small journal page like this, it's so sometimes it's a little bit more challenging to get the variation of color that I'm looking for. But that's okay. It's it's part of that process. Every time I do this, you get such a random pattern. It's never going to be the same every single time. I'm pretty happy with that. I like a lot of the different textures and the different colors that I have in here. And with your extra paint, what you can do is just add it to a journal page. And so I'm going to do that quickly and then move on to the next step. So the nice thing about using a brayer is that your paint dries very quickly and you're able to move on to the next step right away. So in this case, I'm going to be using my Nicole Wright Mountain Stencil and I'm just pushing it up kind of to the top third or so of the page just so that I end up having a little bit more visual interest as I work. I'm also going to put down some more gesso on my palette paper 
And I'm also going to add a little bit of this Hickory Smoke Distress Paint. And there's a lot of different tools you can use for adding paint to your journal page. But in my case, I'm just going to be using a blending foam because that works quite well for me. And so what I'm doing is just pushing it through very gently and adding white in the mountain areas. And you actually want to add it just past it along the top here. And just use a little bit at a time. If you if it gets a little bit too much on your blending foam, it can end up just kind of splotching through your stencil and you're not going to get the level of image and detail that you're looking for. And again, the lighter the layers you use, the faster this is going to dry. And again, you don't necessarily have to use a, a blending foam. There's a lot of different foam and blending options available out there. You could even just use a paintbrush, but I'm really enjoying how this is kind of working out on my, on my layout. And now I'm going to come in with a tiny bit of the gray, just along the bottom. I want the idea that there is shadow and light in these mountains. It's subtle though. And you'll notice that I actually didn't add any paint past the bottom of the stencil. I kind of don't want a harsh line there. I want it to be very kind of loose and fluid. And now we're going to add another layer in behind. And so to do this, I'm trying to think about kind of where the mountains are falling and how I'm going to be able to easily do this without marring my image above. And I think I'm going to do it about there. Again, go back in with a little bit of the white paint. And this time what you want to do is you want to make sure you're coming up next to but not covering the previous mountain image that you had. And if this is hard for you, I would say try masking it. I tend to wing it a little bit and that can be challenging at moments if you, this is not something you're well practiced at. And with these mountains, I would add a little bit more of the deeper gray. Part of that is usually mountains in the background are usually a little bit duller looking and they are a little bit lighter looking. And part of that too is because now you've actually put in the line for the mountains, you want to try to make sure that you can tell it's not just sky, but it is actually mountains. I'm going to add just a tiny bit more of the gray to this because I already had a little bit of white still in my sponge. This makes this a, a little bit more a lighter gray than maybe the color of hickory smoke that's actually in the bottle. In this case I'm actually going to grab a clean sponge and I'm going to add a little bit more whiting because I want to try to get this a little bit more of the brilliant white that we want on the top of the mountains. Now we just want to try to add a little bit more white just along the tops here to show the difference between the mountains and the stencil. And very gently pull that away. And now what I'm going to do is actually go in with a paintbrush and a little bit of water. If you haven't uh, used a lot of paint in your work and you're not as familiar with it, one thing you can do is if you find that your color is a little too intense, if you want us to do a very light wash over top, add a little bit of water to your paintbrush. Thin that paint a little bit and it's going to make a big difference 
on how it looks on your surface. Because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to cover up a little bit of the white to soften it. We're not trying to completely cover it up. And then I also like trying to do mark making here. So I like going in little X marks. Because again, after you've had this more smooth look, it's kind of fun to try to vary your, your mark making. It actually adds variety to your art journal page. And there I got a little close to the edge, so you do need to be very careful with that. I could have maybe gone for a slightly thinner paintbrush, but I do like these flat paintbrushes because they do help you kind of control the the edges a little bit better and the movement a little bit better. And I'm not going to go too crazy with this. I do still want it to look like there's a blue sky. I don't want it completely white, but I do want it contrasting. So I really like this with the idea of this cloudiness and you also have the mountains themselves. If you want this to look almost a bit more misty, one thing you can do is very gently pull a little bit of paint across very, very gently. And this can give the idea of slightly misty mountains. So if you don't want that perfect stenciled image, it's a way of softening things and giving it a little bit more of a soft look. So you wanna make sure this is fully dry before you move on to the next step. I'm gonna be adding a quote on this page, but also using some of my finer art markers and pens, and you can actually ruin the nibs on them with wet paint. So you wanna make sure this is fully dry before moving on to this step. I'm gonna use both the Wild Whisper Road Trip and the Wild Whisper Brush Letters for this saying. And I actually chose something from Dr. Seuss. Today is your day, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. And so I'll show you how to stamp this just using just a stamping block and we'll, I'll talk a little bit about why I chose this word. If you are actually looking for a video specifically about stamping, I did do a very detailed video about different ways you can stamp, difference between stamps and other things that you might find useful. So I'm gonna be using a combination of stamps and my own writing in this quote today. So why I chose today is your day, your mountain is waiting, so get on your way is because I've been thinking a lot about the idea of feeling a little bit on hold from the pandemic and just on hold in general it feels like everything's been a challenge lately and sometimes I don't always see that as an opportunity but it's important that we do we always have choice I'm reading a really great book about the idea of choice and we can choose on how we're going to be seen in every one of our days and we do have a choice on how we present ourselves in that time and so I love the idea that it can be optimistic, that even though things may not be exactly what we plan them to be, and things might not be going exactly the way we hope they would, that doesn't mean that there is an opportunity in today. And it also means that sometimes it's hard to be resilient, but I think it's really important that we do try to find some level of resilience during this time. It isn't easy. I'll be honest, I've been struggling a lot with resilience lately, but I have to say that it's projects like that that keep me on the right track. And just to, to always remind myself, like, this isn't the end. This is just a season that we're in and it's going to get better from here. And we just need to keep climbing that mountain, keep finding our way through and just embrace it. Embrace what is, not what we wish it would be, because honestly, I wish I could go hug someone right now. I wish I didn't have to worry about social distancing, but this is my reality. Instead of being really resentful of it, I'm really trying to embrace it for what it can be. And so you can see that when you're actually trying to line up the letters, I lined them up this way, and then I flip them over to check their placement to make sure they were hitting the right space. 
I know often I, I tend to get excited and I end up doing lots of layers in my projects, but I really wanted to share something with you that was fairly straightforward and easy to do. I think sometimes I can overcomplicate our drilling where a page can take me a better part of a week to accomplish. And there's something to be said about throwing down some paint, throwing down a stencil, getting something that's really effective, but isn't necessarily a lot of time. We don't necessarily have to be using a ton of time to tell our story. And it can be really helpful when you're not having to worry about spending a week on a project, but you know, 10 or 15 minutes should be lots. I always check my spelling as well when I'm lining up my stamps. You never know if you're getting it right sometimes. And I love this road trip stamp set from Wild Whisper Designs. I like that they're fairly narrow letters, which makes it very easy to get them on smaller journal pages like this one. And with these cursive stamps, I tend to stamp them one at a time and then overlap them. I think I was maybe not applying enough pressure up above there, which is why they didn't completely come through really dark. I think what I'm going to do is actually go in with a pen and just clean up those edges and make them a little bit darker so they stand out a little bit more. I think this had to do with user error over any issues with the stamps. These are actually really great quality stamps and they generally stamp really well. I do love those cursive stamps. A little bit of overlap and they look fantastic. So now you want to add in the rest of your lettering. I actually went in and cleaned up some of my stamping a little bit using one of my platinum fountain pens. Because it is a fountain pen, the paint on the surface will not clog the nib, which is why I'm using it for this application. And so you need to think about kind of where you want your lettering. And this is a script called Fun and Funky that I got in a creative journaling class that I have been taking. And if you don't like how thin this is, you can always go over it again with your pen to make it a little bit thicker and maybe add a little bit of variation to the lines. You can also choose to use a different color if you'd like. Just keep thickening up your lines and changing your lines as you see fit for how you want your final look to this writing to be. So there is the completed lettering. As you can see in some places, I wasn't as consistent. Some of my letters aren't all the same size, but that is part of adding your own personal touch to your art journaling projects. And I like adding some of my own writing. I used to hate my writing and used to never use it in any of my projects, but I'm trying to embrace the imperfection and embrace the fact that adding your own writing to your journaling pages is really important and it is your own personal touch on your project. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something new today. Um, maybe about stenciling or acrylic paint or maybe even about stamping. If you're interested in this stencil, you can find it at wellwhisperdesigns.com. If you use DT Nadine at checkout, you will get 10% off of your order. For next week's video, I'm gonna be doing a mixed media panel. So if you don't wanna miss that, subscribe and hit the notification button so you're alerted when that video comes up. Also check out my, my website, hopalongstudio.com where I have lots of other creative self-care ideas. I also post photo directions for each of my videos. So if you are interested in following along or maybe referring yourself back to some of the steps without watching the video, I do have instructions on my website. I hope you have a really great week and I will see you next time.